Hi, I'm Ralph Gable with Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In this video, I want to demonstrate my experiment with the ubiquitous UHF connectors and compare them to type N connectors. You know, as hams, there are SO239s and PL259s everywhere. They're more commonly known as UHF connectors. And I had heard somewhere that these were not the best connectors in the world to use for certain frequencies. So I thought I would do a little bit of research. And what I discovered was that these were actually initially designed back in the 1930s as a video connector to be used with TV. And in those days, UHF was considered 30 megahertz and above. Well, since then, uh, UHF has been redefined as 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz, and VHF is 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. But these uh, connectors were never renamed, even though the frequency bands had been redefined. Now, when you think about a connector that is to be used for RF connections, there are two things that are of particular importance. Number one is that the connector maintains the same impedance through the entire length of the connection. Otherwise you get changes in impedance and reflections coming back from the, the connection. And the other thing is that its impedance is the same as the, the feed line that you're using it in. So if you have a 75 ohm feed line and a 50 ohm connector, well, guess what? Right at that connection, you're going to have a reflection because there's an impedance mismatch at that point. So anytime you have an impedance change, you get problems in your, in your feed line. Part of the problem with the UHF connectors is they are not constant impedance connectors. In other words, they do not maintain their impedance across the entire connection. And according to some sources, they say that this connector shouldn't be used at frequencies exceeding 100 megahertz. And others say, well, you know, if you go out and you buy really, really good connectors, high quality connectors, you might be able to get away with them as high as 300 megahertz. And yet you can go out and buy an amateur radio, uh, dual band radio with, uh, with 70 centimeter capabilities, and that's the 420 to 450 megahertz band. And guess what kind of antenna connector it has? It has a UHF connector. So I decided that I was going to do an experiment. Now, I know that adapters usually are the most notorious for demonstrating the worst characteristics of any particular connector type. So, because I was looking for a microcosm of badness from any particular connector type, I thought that maybe what I would do is build up a set of adapters to use as my test subject. And so what I decided to do was to use two female to female connectors with a male to male connector in the middle. And so you have female to female, male to male, female to female. And so that's what I did. And I did the same thing with my, with my UHF connectors. I was just showing you the, uh, the uh, N, the type N connector. And so here I have my female to female, female to female with a male to male. Well, the problem is my vector network analyzer can't talk to UHF connectors. So I was forced to have to add an adapter to the end of that, which goes from an N, a type N connector to the UHF connectors. So by the time I get entirely done with my test subject, something that I can actually test with my vector network analyzer, I end up with an N, I end up with an N, but everything in between that is all UHF connectors. So 
what are the results of these tests? Well, first of all, what did I want to test? I wanted to test SWR. In other words, if I take a calibrated 50 ohm load, which has a very, 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 very low SWR, and I connect it to one end of the, the connector set like that, and then I take my vector network analyzer, which has been calibrated right to the end of the cable here, and connect it to the other end, then I'm measuring the SWR, the impact of this connector set on the SWR as seen by the vector network analyzer at this point. The other test I wanted to do was to look at, to see what kind of loss I would get going through here. To do that, I do a two port measurement where I connect up one port to one side of the connector set. I connect the other port to the other side of the connector set. And then I measure how much of the signal is lost through the connector set. So those are my measurements. Now, let's take a look and see what I get in the way of results. So here are the results of the SWR measurements. The orange line that you see steadily rising with frequency is the UHF connector combination. The gray line that you see down here is the type N connector. And the blue line is showing that the the load that I'm using is perfectly calibrated. We get a one-to-one -one SWR across the entire band of frequencies. So if we look at the UHF connector, as we increase in frequency, remember that uh, frequency uh, limitation of 100 megahertz. Well, here we are at 100 megahertz. And notice the, the uh, SWR at this point is 1.1 seven to one, 1 1.18 to one at 100 megahertz. Rising as we approach into the two meter amateur radio band, we're looking at 1.25 to one on one end and 1.26 to one on the other end of the band. This is just the, the UHF connectors. Now we continue on as we get up to the 70 centimeter band 420 to 450 megahertz and look at this SWR here 1.67 to 1 on one end of the band and 1.69 1 point almost 1 1.7 to 1 at the top end of the band well what does that come out to in real power levels well plotting power levels uh, how much power is being reflected back at the transmitter just from this set of connectors, we can see here with a, a 100 watt transmitter being used, 1.26 to 1.34 watts on the two meter band. That's, that's 1 1.25, 1 1.26, 1 1.3% of your power is being reflected back at the transmitter. When you get up to the 70 centimeter band, here you have 6.3 watts being reflected back at the transmitter at the bottom end, 6.7 watts at the top end of the band. That's not real stellar. Whereas with the end connector, look at this, 70 milliwatts being reflected back. 70 milliwatts, 80 milliwatts at the top end of the band and 70 milliwatts at the bottom end of the band. And you can see SWR wise what that comes out to on the 70 centimeter band with the type N connector. It's a 1.05, 1 1.06 to 1 SWR as compared to the UHF connectors, 1.7 to 1 almost. Well, what about uh, the loss, the through loss 
uh, that we're talking about. It looks a little funky, but that is because of the nature of the uh, what happens with the length of the connector. But you can nonetheless see this steady decline. This is the UHF connector here. And you can see this steady uh, decline as we're looking at re what's called through loss. In other words, it's getting the, the further down this line goes, the more you're losing in the connector. If you, if you want to look at real loss in terms of how much power is being uh, consumed, literally consumed and re, re, uh, turned into heat in the connector, that's this other chart here. So here we are with our 100 watt transmitter and we're, the orange is the end connector. Even out here in the 70 centimeter band, we're still under two watts being uh, lost. Whereas up here, we're up close to 11 and a half watts or 11 watts up in here. This is just, just incredible. So the UHF connector is, is lossy you can see the lossy, look here at the two meter band, you're still looking at like three watts, three and a half watts of power in the two meter band being lost because of this, this uh, bunch of connectors. So what kind of conclusions am I going to draw from all of this? Well, if I were to take my UHF connectors and take this set of UHF connectors and put it in series with my UHF antenna to use in the 70 centimeter band, I would be losing about 17 and a half percent of my power between what power is being reflected back from it as well as the power being turned into heat by it. Now compare that to the, to the response of the type N connector where I'm only losing 0.91% between reflected power and loss turned into heat. So let's see, 17.5%, 0.9%. Not a very hard decision to make. I think I choose the 0.9%. So as a result of all this, I have decided that I'm going to go through and change every connector I can between my transmitter and my antenna from the PL259 SO239, otherwise known as the UHF connectors, all to type N. Because I don't want to throw away power. It doesn't do me any good. But what about those, those uh, frequency limitations that some people want to put on the the UHF connectors. Well, after looking at all the graphs and everything uh, that I've seen with these, I have to agree with them. I, I wouldn't use these above 100 megahertz. They're okay for HF down in the uh, 30 megahertz and 14 megahertz and three and a half megahertz, they're fine. But anything above 100 megahertz, I wouldn't use them. Okay, end connectors are more expensive, but you know, they're worth it if you want to get every, every watt of power out to your antenna that you can get out. So now you have it, which is better, UHF or N? I'll take the N. Thanks for watching. Toulouse.